Hi guys, welcome to GoTutorial Part 11. My name is Tensor from the Tensor Programming Blog, and today we're just going to do a rather quick tutorial, and we're going to implement a method to hash our password using bcrypt, and we are also going to create our unique user ID for our table. First, before we start coding, let's go over what exactly these two things are. So, our universal unique identifier is basically just going to look like this. So as you can see, there's eight characters here, then four, then four, then four, and then tw uh, 12. And these are all generated by random numbers. Then for bcrypt, bcrypt is basically just a hashing function that was created back in 99. And it's pretty much the default uh, hashing algorithm used on many of the Linux distributions. And it's pretty, uh, it's a very strong way of actually encrypting a password. So currently, if we look at our data inside of our SQL file, you'll see here that our password is in plain text. This is not something that we want. Generally, when you create a web app that has user validation, you want the users to be able to sign in, and you want to be able to store their passwords, but you never want to be able to store their passwords in plain text. Because first of all, it would be insecure, because anybody who had admin access would be able to just break into your SQL database and you know access anybody else's account but also because it would be very easy for somebody to hack and so if somebody tries to hack this particular database as it is currently all they have to do is guess what the white password is whereas if we encrypt it with bcrypt then they have to guess both the password and the salt that we use to hash the actual password. Okay, so let's get started. So let's actually uh, integrate the uh, bcrypt right now. So Go has its own bcrypt library. It's not a standard library, but it is a pretty well used library. So let's import it. The library that we're going to need is golang.org backslash x backslash crypto backslash bcrypt. And this is going to allow us to encrypt our password. So we're going to create a function, and let's call it encrypt pass, and we're going to pass in our password, which will be of type string, of course, and then we are going to pass back a string. So our encrypt password is going to be rather easy. So we're going to bring in our password, and then we are going to convert it to a byte, or rather a slice of byte. So we will say pass equals slice of bytes, password, hashing, so there is a function in our bcrypt that allows us to simply just hash our password. So we will say hash pw comma underscore equals and let's call our library bcrypt and then the function is called generate from password and in here we enter in our password and then we enter in the cost which is basically the amount of computational power that we want to uh, encrypt this particular password with. So in this case we're just going to use the default cost which is actually just 10 so I can just put in 10 and it will work. But I'd rather just actually bring in our default cost so bcrypt default cost. So now we have our hash password and we just need to return it as a string because it's a slice of bytes. So now we will actually encrypt the password and it will return it as a string. So we have this user exists function up here and this what this does is it queries the database for the username and password where the username and password equal such and such. So we need to amend it and this will allow us to validate the user based on the hashed password. So the way we amend it is we come down here between where we scan our password and where we actually check if the password equals um, the password that we're bringing in from the user instance and we say password equal bcrypt compare and hash password and then we're going to pass in a slice of bytes for our password which is the one that's being brought out of the SQLite database and then we are going to pass in our u.password which is the password that's being passed through the form for validation. So what this will do is it will compare the two and it will compare our password, say it's just password or 1,2,3,4,5,6 with the hashed version of 1,2,3,4,5,6 and it will 
either send back nil if they are actually equal or it will send back an error if they aren't. So we can come here instead of saying ps equals u.password we can say pw equals nil so if this comes back as nil that means that they're both equal and so we want to return true which means our user exists in the database. We also want to amend this here because the way that we're searching for our username and password is we are actually searching for a username with this username, so the instance username, and a password with that use password. But unfortunately, this password is not going to be in our database anymore. So if we just remove this part entirely and just search for the username, things should work much better. So now we can go into our main.go file, and we can come down here to our sign up function. And where we are actually bringing in the password, we can just call our function and encrypt it straight from the form value. And what this will do is it will encrypt the password, and then when we put it into our database, it will be encrypted. So at no point in our API will we have the white password, which is nice. Though, if you're going to do things like this, if you're working on, like, say, a commercial version, I would probably uh, use an in-between variable and not call the function directly. Normally, you'd have some kind of error that you'd be passing back from the function as well. So, generally, you wouldn't want to do it like this. But, because of the way that we're building this user function, it shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so now we need to create our unique user ID. So, if you remember, the way the unique user ID works is it is a bunch of random numbers where we have eight numbers in the front, then four, then four, then four, and then twelve. So, the way our function is going to work is we're going to input nothing and then we're going to output an ID of string so we want to have a global variable called ID and we're going to say okay b make and we're going to make a an array of bytes and this is going to be of 16 of size 16 and the reason why it's going to be of size 16 despite the fact that our actual user ID is of size 32 is because a byte actually is two characters so this actually will work to our advantage so we're only using a size 16, but it will actually look like it's 32. So now we need to generate our random numbers, and we're going to use a library that exists in Golang. So let's actually call rand.read, and we're going to set mb in there. And our library is called crypto rand. So here it is, crypto rand. And this is allowing us to create or to put random numbers into this byte. But they're not just random numbers, random characters. Then we need to check our error. So we're going to say if error is not equal to nil, return. And this will just quit the function if we have an error. Otherwise, we need to say id equals fmt.sprintf. And this will allow us to format our string for a return. And the way we want to format it is we want to put dashes between a certain amount of characters. So if you remember what it looked like in the Wikipedia article, as you can see, there are six characters here, and then a dash, then four, then four, then four, and then another set of characters. So all we really need to do is make it look like this. So we're going to say, okay, so our first x is going to be b0 to 4. Our second x will be 4 and 6, because remember, 2. So this is only two uh, parts of the array, but it will be four characters long. And as you can see, for our next two, we also do two characters long, so 6 to 8, and then 8 to 10. And then we do the rest, which is 10 to 16. So we just can call 10 to the end. And this will format it the way that we want. So then all we have to do at the end is just hit return, and this will return our ID because we have already defined it up here as our return value. So now we need to actually edit our save data function here so that it will actually save the unique user ID. So we want to set in our unique user ID as a text field, and then we want to set it in here as well which means we also need to add another question mark in here. And then we want to call it in our exec function as u.uid. So this will work, 
But right now, of course, we're not actually setting it in through main. So we want to actually call UUID. And then we're going to call our function UUID. So this will generate a unique user ID and set it into this field automatically. So we need to delete our database because as it is currently, we only have five columns and we just made it so that we have six columns. So we could either delete the database or delete the table. So let's just delete the table. And if we open up the database again, it has no table in it. So let's run our file real quick and uh, see what happens. So here we are at the sign up page and let's sign up. Okay, so we'll put in Tensor with a capital T, and then we'll put in John Doe, and we'll put in test at example.com, and our password will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and we'll hit Submit. Now let's take a look at our SQLite database. So inside of our database, we have our unique user ID. As you can see, it's formatted in the way that we wanted which is nice. We also have our password and as you can see this is not 123456 rather this has been completely hashed and in fact to demonstrate my point first let's log in but so it's actually checking the 123456 with the hashed password if we sign up again let's say tensor2 first name john2 do2 and let's give her an email of just test at test.com and say let's put in the same password one two three four five six and hit submit if we look at this in the database as you can see here the first two characters are the same so it goes a dollar sign then two way then a dollar sign then ten then a dollar sign and then from there everything else is completely different but even though these are the same passwords in reality they will actually come back as uh, correct if we try to match them. So if I try to sign in as Tensor2 and I just type in 123456, it will still work even though there are two separate hashes. So this is kind of cool. And as you can see, our unique ID has also been updated and is completely different. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. In our next tutorial, we'll actually start to look at how we can add more user validation to this application and we will look at why we actually created this unique user ID. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, of course, feel free to comment, and if you dislike the video, then feel free to downvote it. I hope you guys have a happy new year.